In order for us to sketch this graph, we will need to determine the sequence of transformation because fx is going to be translated via two transformations to this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to replace x by modulus of x, which will then give me this. And if I were to just replace x, I'm going to then replace x by x minus 1. And it is going to give me what the question asked me to sketch. So this will have already determined for me the sequence that I'm going to be transforming this graph of y is good fx, which is first to replace x by modulus of x. So if I were to do this particular transformation, the negative portion, the portion that is on the negative x-axis side will disappear. And I will be just keeping the part that is on the positive x-axis side. And this portion is going to be reflected by the y-axis which means that if I were to do a, just a quick sketch of this graph of y is equal to f modulus of x, I'm going to get something that is like this. Please take note, I'm sketching this graph. So I'm sketching the graph of y is equal to f modulus of x. So y-axis is here, x-axis is here. I'm going to retain this portion. So I'm going to be retaining the vertical asymptote and I will have this. So this is x is equal to 1. I'll be retaining this horizontal asymptote since it is affecting this part of the graph. So we'll have a horizontal asymptote. And this is y is equal to 1. So this part will remain as it is. So we'll have a graph that is like this. And this part will also remain. So I will have this. And please take note that the tangent at this point here. The tangent at this point here is going to be having a negative value. So we are drawing this part as a tangent and as a negative value. It is not a turning point. And the coordinate of this is 0, minus 4. And this portion is going to be reflected. So for the vertical asymptote, I will have another portion that is here, another vertical asymptote that is here. This will be x is equal to minus 1. It is a reflection of this vertical asymptote. And this portion of the graph is going to be slanted down this way. And this is a sharp point because the tangent is at an angle, which means that when I reflect this, I'm going to be getting a sharp point here. And as for this portion, it's also going to be reflected. So I'll be getting a graph that is like this. And from this graph, we are going to do one more transformation to get what the question wants me to sketch. So we will be replacing x by x minus 1, which means that it is going to be a translation by one unit in the positive x direction. So let's translate this entire graph by one unit in the positive x direction. The vertical asymptote x is equal to minus 1 will become the vertical asymptote x is equal to 0. And this vertical asymptote, it will be increased by 1. So I will have a vertical asymptote x is equal to 2. So this is my x is equal to 2 vertical asymptote. So x is equal to 2. My horizontal asymptote will remain as it is. So y is equal to 1 is going to continue to be the horizontal asymptote. So we have this. The horizontal asymptote y is equal to 1. So this portion of the graph will be here. So it will be this not touching the, the vertical asymptote and tending towards the horizontal asymptote. So this graph coming down, tending towards the horizontal asymptote. And this entire portion is going to be translated by one unit. So it's going to be here. Let me sketch it. So it will be here. There will be a sharp point here somewhere. Then curving back down towards the vertical asymptote. And this point here has a coordinate of 1 minus 4 because the x coordinate here will be increased by 1. And as for this portion, it is going to be here. So we we'll have a graph that is like this. Turning towards the vertical asymptote, x is equal to 0. And this will be my graph of y is equal to f modulus of x minus 1 sketched. The graph of y is equal to 1 over fx. Let's first focus on all the asymptotes that we are seeing in the original graph. So for this horizontal asymptote, it will become a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 1 over 1, which is still going to be equal to 1. So let me sketch in the horizontal asymptote. So let's say it is somewhere here. 
So we have our horizontal asymptote and this is y is equal to 1. As for vertical asymptote, it is going to become the x-intercept. So we have a plus or minus 1 as the x-intercept. So let's say one point is, for example, here, and the other point is, let's say, here. So with these two points, one is going to be at 1, 0. Then the other one over here, this is going to be at minus 1, 0. So the graph will be passing through these two points. And next, let's work on the xy intercept. So for the x intercept, it is going to become a vertical asymptote. So this to the left hand side, I will draw my vertical asymptote. Let's say it is somewhere here. Okay, and this is going to be my vertical asymptote x is equal to minus 2. And we have another y intercept here. And for this y intercept, it is going to become 0. 1 over minus 4. So it is going to be somewhere here. I'm not very sure whether I will be getting a nice enough graph if I were to poke it now, but I'm going to just do it anyway. So this point here is at 0 and minus 1 over 4. It is a transform point from this point A. And next, let me just work from the left to the right, picking a point that is on the graph, like what I have discussed on the Chivas TV. So I will pick a point that is on this graph and we will transform that point. So for example, a point that is all the way to the left. If I were to pick a point that is here and assigning an arbitrary coordinates to this point, this is all the way to the left. So I'm going to go for, let's say, minus 100. It is a value, it has a y coordinate that is slightly less than 1. So let's say 0 0.9. So it is going to be transformed to the point minus 100 and 1 over 0 0.9 on the graph of y is equal to 1 over the original fx, which is 1 over 0 0.9. And this is going to give me a number that is bigger than 1, so it's going to be slightly above the horizontal asymptote here. And as it proceeds nearer and nearer to b, if I were to pick a point that is just before the graph cuts the x-axis, this point here, if I were to assign for it once again an arbitrary coordinate, it can be something that is like minus 2.1 and the corresponding y coordinate can be like 0 0.01 which means that if it undergoes this transformation it will be a point 2.1 and 1 over 0 0.01 is going to be equal to 100 so if i were to then sketch this point it is going to be somewhere here so from here we have a graph that tends to the point minus 2.1 and 100. Next, I'm going to pick a point that is to the right hand side of B. And for this point here, if I were to assign to it an arbitrary coordinate, this like minus 1.9, the y coordinate, I'm going to just still go for 0 0.01, positive 0 0.01. So undergoing this transformation, it is going to be minus 1.9, and 1 over 0 0.01 gives me 100. So I will have a negative 1.9, which is somewhere here and positive 100, which is here. And this is going to be connected to this point. So let me sketch it all the way down with the vertical asymptote as x is equal to minus 2 passing through this point. And it's going to make a turning point here. Minus 0 0.5 minus 3 will become minus 0 0.5 and 1 over minus 3. So it's going to be below minus 1 over 4. So if I were to let it go down, and making a turn, let's say, to here. Then this point, this minimum point here, this point here will be minus 0 0.5 and minus 1 over 3. And then it is going to be connected to this point. So it's going to go to here. And it is going to go up to this point here. And when it goes to this point here, if I were to assign to it an arbitrary coordinate again, since it's all the way to the right, I'm going to go for positive 100 and it is a little bit above 1, so like 1.1. And doing a transformation to this, it will be 100 and 1 over 1.1. And 1 over 1.1 is going to be less than y is equal to 1. So it's going to be somewhere below the horizontal asymptote. Let's say it is going to be here. So this graph is going to be tending towards the horizontal asymptote. So it will be something that is like this. And over here, the graph of y is equal to f prime x. I'm going to use the same process that I've discussed on the Achievers TV under differentiation, where we are sketching the graph of y is equal to f prime x, which means that the y coordinate that is on this graph 
represents the gradient that I'm seeing here. I'm going to work on the asymptotes. That is my first step. So the horizontal asymptote will become a new horizontal asymptote of y is equal to zero because the gradient at the two ends are zero. So my new horizontal asymptote will be y is equal to zero. And vertical asymptotes will retain as vertical asymptote because when x is good to minus one or one, there's no gradient, which means that when x is good to minus one or one, y, which represents the gradient, should be undefined. So I have these two vertical asymptotes. Let me sketch them in here. One, let's say it is this. So this is my first horizontal vertical asymptote. X is equal to minus one. And the other vertical asymptote will be here. And this is going to be x is equal to 1. Next, I'm going to mark points where f prime x is equal to 0. So I see one point here, the other point is going to be here. So for this, the y coordinate is going to be 0 when x is equal to minus 2. So let's say it is somewhere here. So this will be minus 2, 0. The other point is going to be here, minus 0 0.5, the gradient is 0. So let's say it is going to be somewhere here minus 0 0.5 the y coordinate which represents the gradient or that is on this graph is zero and the next step that i have suggested on the achievers tv is to try to get an overview of where are the positive and negative gradients on the original graph so that i can mark out the regions where y coordinate is going to be residing for example all the way to the left here this region here has all negative gradients which means that the y coordinate that is on this must be negative so i am expecting that from negative infinity all the way until minus two the graph must be residing below the axis so that the y coordinate can be negative and for this portion here from minus two to minus one the gradient is positive so from minus two to minus one the graph should be residing above the axis similarly here the gradient is positive from minus one to minus 0.5 so from minus 1 to minus 0 0.5, the gradient is positive. Y coordinate should be positive here. Then from minus 0 0.5 all the way until x is equal to 1, the gradient is negative. So from minus 0 0.5 all the way until 1, my graph should be here. The gradient is negative. The y coordinate here is going to be negative. The gradient here are all negative. So for this portion, my graph should be residing below the axis or so. And the last step is to just read the gradient from here and transforming it as numerical y coordinate that is on this graph. So all the way to the left, we are seeing a gradient that is close to zero, but still a little bit negative. So the y coordinate is close to zero, but still a little bit negative. The gradient becomes more and more negative. So the y coordinate will become more and more negative. And at some point, which I cannot determine based on the information that is given, you will become still negative, but you'll become less and less negative back to zero. So the y coordinate will become less and less negative going back to zero. And that is when it links up with this point minus two, zero. Where the y coordinate is zero, the gradient is zero when x is equal to minus two. And then the gradient will become positive and it will just grow more and more positive. So the y coordinate will become positive and it will just grow more and more positive, making sure that I'm sketching the graph at the region that I have ticked in the previous part. So I'm respecting all these red colored ticks. And then the gradient is going to be super, super positive value and slowly going back to zero. So the y coordinate will be super positive here since it represents the gradient. And gradually it will go back to zero. It will go back to zero when x is equal to minus 0 0.5. That is where the turning point was. And that is why here minus 0 0.5 has corresponding y coordinate as zero. And the gradient will become negative and it will just go more and more negative. So the y coordinate will become negative and it will just go more and more negative towards x is equal to one. So I'm going to try to sketch that here. Going more and more negative, heading towards x is equal to one. And then the gradient is like super, super negative value and it will slowly become less and less negative taking back to zero, although it is still going to be negative. So negative y coordinate, very, very negative y coordinate, gradually become less and less negative and you will tend towards zero, but you will still maintain as a negative value. So tending towards this horizontal asymptote of y is equal to zero. And this is my graph of y 
is equal to f prime x. But this question added one more piece of information. This is not common, but I'm glad Daman Hai has done this, which is when x is equal to 0, dy dx is equal to minus 3, which means that on this graph, we will be able to determine one extra point, which is when x is equal to 0. The y coordinate is going to be representing f prime x, which is minus 3. So that point is here. So for this point, one last piece of information that I should add is when it is 0, the gradient is minus 3. So the y coordinate here is minus 3.